All right, this week was absolutely insane. We had so many awesome releases. We're going to talk about it today. I also just got done with a live stream where we went over a lot of these stories and I had some special guests. You got to meet some of the people on the team. So be sure to check out the next live stream. I think we're going to be doing it every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific. Our first story, let's start with Mr. Strawberry. I rule the world, Mo. He absolutely took over Twitter, AI Twitter, that is, this week and went from 3,000 followers to 33,000 followers, pretty much hyping the hell out of Strawberry, which is Q-Star, whatever you want to call it. It is the new logic and reasoning model, maybe GPT-5 from OpenAI. But here's the thing, he was wrong about most of it. And you know what? It was fun. I don't really blame him for putting out a lot of BS, but at the end of the day, there were a lot of memes and that's really all that matters, right? So I'm not going to talk too much about this, but yeah, he, he was definitely wrong. And next, Grok 2 Beta is released. I already made a video about this. I'll drop a link in the description below so you can check out a full video about it. Grok 2 Beta released, and here's the thing. You remember that model, Sus Calamar? That showed up on lmsys.org as this anonymous model that nobody really knew what it was? Well, now we know it was Grok 2. I already did a video testing Sus Calamar, so be sure to check that out. I'll also drop that in the description below. So this is the new model release from X.AI, which is Elon Musk's AI company. They get a lot of their training data from X itself. We are excited to release an early preview of Grok 2, a significant step forward from our previous model, Grok 1.5, featuring frontier capabilities in chat coding and reasoning. At the same time, we are introducing Grok 2 Mini, a small but capable sibling of Grok 2. So right now, the only one that's actually available live is Grok 2 Mini not Grok 2, that should be coming soon. Grok 2 is incredibly good at logic and reasoning, and it has a text-to-image model powered by Flux.1. And as a quick reminder, Flux.1 is a completely open source text-to-image model which has great quality on par with Midjourney. And it was started by a group of folks who left Stable Diffusion to create a new company, Flux. And it says right here, Grok2 and Grok2 Mini are currently in beta on X, but that's not actually true. As you can see here, the only one you can get is Grok2 Mini. But people have been going absolutely crazy with the uncensored nature of Grok2 and more importantly, the text to image model. You can basically get anything except nudity. All right, let's look at some examples of the text to images that are being created. Here's one of Kamala and Donald Trump. Kamala's pregnant, wearing a crown. I mean, some of these photos are just absurd. Here's one that started with a Grok image and then was animated with another tool. Here's one of Donald Trump driving what looks like the Mars rover, flying an American flag on Mars. There's a lot of Donald Trump ones. Here's Donald Trump and Abe Lincoln together. Here is the sexiest family on earth, a according to Adriano. Okay. Oh yeah, that, that is definitely a sexy dog. Everybody seemingly is making images of Donald Trump for some reason. Here's one is Darth Vader. Here's another Chewbacca and Han Solo Trump. Love it. And Grok2 does not care about copyright. Here's Naruto. Here's the Flintstones, Simpsons, and this looks incredible. And I actually don't know who this character is, but that's the North Korean leader in the background. And here's another one of Peter Griffin from Family Guy. So as you can see, you can go absolutely nuts with Grok2 text to image. Check it out. Next, people started getting early access to Search GPT, and I'm one of them. So we actually got Search GPT. Let's give it a try. Tell me about the UFC fight this weekend. We get a bunch of sources on the left, and then it writes out a response over here. We can give it a thumbs up or thumbs down, good link, bad link, and we also can get media from it and it is up-to-date information. I've already switched my default search engine to be search GPT, and I'm not looking back. There is really no reason for me to go to Google anymore. I am sorry to say, but it is absolutely true. Google's search dominance is more than being threatened now. It is being dominated. And it's just a matter of time until perplexity and search GPT take over completely. I want answers, I don't want ads, and I don't wanna have to look through 
10 blue links. So I'm thinking about doing a full review of Search GPT, but I'm not sure it warrants a full video, but let me know what you want in the comments below. Next from Multi On, they are releasing Agent Q, research breakthrough for the next generation of AI agents with planning and self-healing capability. So apparently this is kind of the next generation of agent. Now, it is seemingly specifically for consumers. This isn't for enterprise and it's closed source. So keep that in mind, but introducing Agent Q. And in recent years, the capabilities of large language models have transformed natural language processing and understanding achieving remarkable milestones. Despite these advancements, LLMs face significant challenges in interactive environments, especially in tasks requiring multi-step reasoning like web navigation. So enter Agent Q a major milestone for agents combining search, self-critique, and reinforcement learning to create state-of-the-art autonomous web agents that can plan and self-heal. I definitely wanna try it out. I haven't tried it yet. It looks really cool, but let's look at the actual benchmarks. So in real world booking experiments on OpenTable, Multion's agents drastically improved the zero shot performance of the Llama 3 model from an 18% to 81%, that is, astounding just after one day of autonomous data collection and further 95% with online search. Amazing. So they have a whole paper here. Let me know if you want me to break down the paper in a separate video. I'm happy to do that. They used a lot of components of what Strawberry and QSTAR are supposed to be. So guided search with MCTS, that is Monte Carlo tree search, AI self critique and DPO direct preference optimization. Now, why is this important? Because a lot of people have been talking about Strawberry and QSTAR lately, and these are the elements that have supposedly made up QSTAR. And the Multion team has attached themselves to Mr. Strawberry, I rule the world Mo, claiming that that is them, but who knows if that's actually true? Nobody actually knows who I rule the world is. But either way, looks like another cool agent that we get to play around with, so I'm excited. Next, from cosign.sh, we have the best software engineering model to date. Genie is the best software engineering model in the world, scoring a state-of-the-art score of 30% on Sweebench and 50% on Sui Light. Now, what does that actually mean? This is a model that is trained to write code and it writes code incredibly well. You give it a task, whatever that task is, and it will write the code, correct existing code, update existing code, whatever you need. And here are the benchmarks for it. So we see Cosine Genie at the top with a 30% on sweep bench. Now, the most popular coding agent to date has been Cognition Devon. And this is the extrapolated version coming in at 14%, less than half of the score of Cosine Genie. So they really made a huge jump in performance. And if you look at Cognition Devon down here, this is just another version, I think maybe the actual tested version versus the self-reported version. I'm not sure what the difference is, but this is 4%. So as you can see, a much better performance than anything else on the market. It was trained with 21% JavaScript, 21% Python, 14% TypeScript, and so on. My favorite programming language, aside from Python, Ruby, coming in at a measly 3%. And here's the data mix. Feature development, 25%. Bug fixing, 20%. Refactor. 15%, minor changes in chores, 15%, test writing, incredibly important, especially for AI code builders, 15%, and writing documentation, 10%. Genie was always designed to be agentic as well. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do also join the wait list. Next is possibly one of the most exciting stories of the week and almost flew under the radar a little bit. Sakana AI has created what they call the AI scientist. This is fully automated, open-ended scientific discovery. That means that this model has been trained and framework has been trained to actually make scientific discovery, not simply repeat back what's in its training set. It is actually able to make new discoveries, which if you remember back to Leopold Aschenbrenner's paper, situational awareness, this is the last step before we have the intelligence explosion artificial intelligence that can actually self-improve. That is what we're seeing here. So let's read a little bit about it. Today, we're excited to introduce the AI Scientist, the first comprehensive system for fully automatic scientific discovery, enabling foundation models such as large language models to perform research independently. We propose and run a fully AI-driven system for automated scientific discovery applied to machine learning research. Now, 
the fact that it's applied to machine learning research is interesting because that means it can self-improve. It could discover ways to get better. And then that compounding effect will be exponential. It is really interesting and a little bit scary to think about. This really is the last step before the intelligence explosion. And for those of you not aware, Sakana AI is a cutting edge AI firm out of Japan. The AI scientist automates the entire research life cycle from generating novel research ideas, writing any necessary code and executing experiments to summarizing experimental results, visualizing them and presenting his findings in a full scientific manuscript. We also introduce an automated peer review process to evaluate generated papers, write feedback and further improve results Results, it is capable of evaluating generated papers with near human accuracy. So cool. It is able to iteratively develop ideas in an open-ended fashion and add them to a growing archive of knowledge, thus imitating the human scientific community. So basically creates an idea or comes up with a hypothesis, tests it, validates it, has a peer review process. And then when everything looks good, it adds it to its own knowledge base so that it could use that for future research. This is stunning. And here's the interesting part. Each idea is implemented and developed into a full paper at a cost of approximately $15 per paper. While there are still occasional flaws in the papers produced by this first version, the cost and promise of the system shows that the potential of the AI scientist is there. So definitely check this out. Again, another paper I haven't yet read in full. There are just so many things that happened this week, but if you wanna see a full review of this, again, let me know in the comments. All right, next, a quick story from OpenAI introducing Sweebench Verified. We're releasing a human validated subset of Sweebench that more reliably evaluates AI models ability to solve real world software issues. So this is a new benchmark, apparently a higher quality benchmark for software engineering models. Each sample in the Sweebench test set is created from a resolved GitHub issue in one of 12 open source Python repositories in GitHub. So here's some example projects tested against this new Sweebench. Here's Agentless, Autocode, Rover, Motless Tools, Ader, one of my favorite, and Sweet Agent. And you can see across the board how they do. So be sure to check this out, openai.com. Next, Google had their Gemini Live event. I made an entire breakdown video about it. I'll drop that in the description below. And aside from a couple cool things they announced, they actually had a pretty touch and go part, which was the Gemini Live demo. And it actually failed twice, it gave an error, and he had to try it again, failed again, and then used a different phone. Good job, Google, having a backup phone there. And then it finally worked. So I'm gonna play this video. It's a little bit over a minute and a half long, and it shows this almost awkward part of the event where it really almost just completely broke. So if I happen to come across this concert poster for Sabrina Carpenter, I'll just open Gemini, take a photo, and ask, check my calendar and see if I'm free when she's coming to San Francisco this year. Gemini pulls relevant content from the image, connects with my calendar, and gives me the information I'm looking for. Oh, looks like we had a little demo issue. Let me try one more time. All right. Check my calendar and see if I'm free when she's coming to San Francisco this year. Let's see if the demo spirits are with us today. Nope, uh-oh, looks, like, uh, looks like they're not with us. All right, let me, let me, uh, let me uh, try that one more time on another device. Sorry about this, folks. Oops, let me go back. All right, I'm gonna take that photo. One more time. Check my calendar and see if I'm free when she's coming to San Francisco this year. All right. 
There we go. All right. Now, here's the interesting thing. Google beat OpenAI to market with a full voice model. You can have a conversation with it. It will talk back with you. You can interrupt and it sounds really good. It doesn't quite sound as good as GPT-40 voice, but it still sounds good. And you know what? They actually shipped. They actually brought it to market. So good job, Google, on that. Next, Anthropic released prompt caching with Claude. Caching is one of the most underutilized and highly valuable pieces of functionality that you can add to a large language model. It reduces your cost, increases speed, increases consistency. If you're building anything with AI and you're doing so at scale, you need caching. So now Anthropic has it. When to use prompt caching, conversational agents reduce costs and latency for extended conversations, especially those with long instructions or uploaded documents. Coding assistance, large document processing, detailed instruction sets, agentic search and tool use. I mean, this is the most obvious one. Why would you have an agent call an LLM to pull a tool or write a tool when it already should just have direct access to the cached version, something we know it works. Talk to books, papers, documentation, podcasts, transcripts, and other long form content. So really cool. And look at these cost reductions. So chatting with a book, 90% cost reduction, many shot prompting, 86% cost reduction, multi-turn conversation, 53%. So this is tremendous. And as you can see here, also the latency has been reduced greatly. So I'm a huge proponent of caching, figure out where it makes sense for you. Caching is a hard problem, by the way. It's a hard problem to solve from the engineering perspective, but it's also a hard problem to know what parts of your prompts and responses you should cache. So a lot of testing in the future, and I'm very, very bullish on caching in general. Next, apparently Apple is building a robot, but not really. It's gonna be a screen and it's gonna have a robot arm. It's all rumors right now. So using search GPT, Apple is reportedly working on a new device that combines an iPad style display with a robotic arm. This device expected to be launched around 2026 or 2027 aims to serve multiple functions such as smart home control, video conferencing, and home security monitoring. But what does it need the arm for? That is weird, but we'll see. The device will feature a thin robotic arm that allows the display to tilt and rotate 360 degrees. So basically the arm looks, at least from rumors, to be used for essentially propping up the screen to make sure it's always facing you. Or maybe it needs to look at something and so it moves the screen and really the camera to look at whatever it needs to look at. And last, Naus Research has released Hermes 3, a fine-tuned set of models based on Llama 3.1. Hermes 3 is available in three sizes, 80, 70, and 405B parameters. It has improvements across the board with particular capability improvements in role-playing, agentic tasks, and more reliable function calling, multi-turn chats, long context coherence, and more. They have a whole research paper about it. I haven't played around with it yet. This week was just too busy to keep up with everything. So again, another thing that if you want me to check it out, if you want me to do a deep dive, let me know in the comments. Here it is versus its relevant Llama 3.1 model. So here's Hermes 3405B versus Llama 3.1405B. And as you can see, it actually looks pretty even in performance, it has some wins at certain benchmarks, but loses in some others. And that looks to be the case across the board. And it has a focus on aligning the model to you instead of a company or external policy. Less censorship, more steerability. I love that. So if it's gonna have similar performance except no sensors, I'm all for it. So that's it for the news today. There has been so much going on this week. I'm so excited to see what comes next week. Make sure to check out the stream next week, 10 a.m. Pacific on Friday. And we just launched memberships for the channel. So we're gonna be adding new perks, but there's already some perks in there. If you wanna support the channel, be sure to become a member. It really helps and I appreciate it and my team appreciates it and the team is growing. So definitely check out memberships. Thank you in advance. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.